an imposition making you come here all the way to see me. Again, let me say I don't know any way of thanking you, Mr. President. Oh, please, Anthony, let's omit the formalities. We've known each other far too long for that. <laughs> I'm only sorry that I didn't bring you better news. I can't believe that Congress has again denied my claim. Completely. I won't say that it's just or unjust. I did my best, but my influence is necessarily limited. I can understand your bitter disappointment at losing your title to the land. And the only hope that I can offer you is that you might appeal again at some future date. A rather fragile hope. <laughs> I'm afraid so. Well, I, uh, I really must be leaving. I'm due in Washington next week to dedicate the White House in our nation's newly chosen capital. Well, thank you again for coming to see me, John. I, I should have come to see you, but with his leg Oh, I... please don't apologize. Quite frankly, I've enjoyed the temporary respite from my responsibilities and position. I get no time for any personal affairs. Well, good night, Anthony. It's been a real pleasure seeing an old friend again. Good night, Mr. President. <laughs> A most impressive title, isn't it? Uh, you have your carriage, of course. Oh, yes. It goes with the office, along with a retinue of guards. Uh, though tonight I have managed to elude them. <laughs> if you're able to travel, why don't you come to Washington next week? Well, uh, anyway, good night. Good night. Uh, can I get a coach for you, sir? Uh, no, I believe my carriage is waiting for me. Thank you. Uh, good night, sir. Good night. I want you to meet my friend, Nancy Bedlow, my husband, Daniel Boone. Very pleased to meet you. Hello, Mr. Boone. Nancy and her father are old friends of mine. I guess I should say employers. I worked for them a long time ago. Would you like some coffee in the dining room? It's been such a long time since we have talked. I'd be delighted. You don't mind? No, I don't mind. I'd kind of like to get out from this stock. I feel kind of like I'm being hanged. <laughs> I won't be long.
Good evening, Mr. Boone. How did you get in here? An influential resident of the hotel, Mr. Bedlow, made the arrangements. He suggested that I contact you. Mr. Bedlow? You know him, then? Is he a daughter by the name of Nancy? Your wife's friend. A convenient circumstance. We thought it wise that Mrs. Boone should not be present when I talked with you. It's just possible that she may have a different opinion on the subject. Who are you, anyway, and what do you want of me? My name is Abigail Adams. John Adams' wife. President? Yes, Mr. Boone. I've often heard my husband speak of you. We've been friends for a long time. I'm depending on that friendship. Because right now, both John and I need your help desperately. I consider that quite an honor, Mrs. Adams, but what can I do to help a president? You can do a great deal, Mr. Boone. But first, I must have your word that what I'm about to tell you will not be repeated. Not even to your wife. It's asking quite a lot. I don't like to keep secrets from her. I'm sure you don't. And I don't like asking you. But being a woman, I have little faith in their ability to keep a secret. So unless I have your promise, I'll have to go to someone else for help. And frankly, I don't know where to go. And there's so little time. Well, in that case, I reckon you can have my promise. Thank you. There are several things that need explaining. This bag contains $100,000. It's ransom money. And you have been selected to deliver it. You see, the president has been abducted. Knowing how much you love the plantation, I didn't think you'd ever leave. The plantation is gone, Rebecca. Gone? It seems that our title to the land was somewhat faulty. Or at least that was the government's decision. We haven't lived there since the war. How dreadful. I can't tell you how much I miss the country. The hunting and the horseback rides. I, I suppose I wasn't meant to be a city dweller. I'm so sorry. I just wish there was something I could say or do. Dear Becky, you've always been so understanding and so loyal. Isn't there some way you can appeal the judgment? Your father's always been an influential man. Oh, he's tried, Becky, so many times, but always the same answer. I feel so sorry for him, having everything he's ever worked for taken away from him. He's here with you, of course. We have a suite here. It's the only home we have now. Oh, I, I would have asked you up there, but my father's been quite ill. A horse fell on him, and he broke his hip and leg. I would like to see him, perhaps before we leave. How long are you staying? Well, that's doubtful. Dan's been engaged to guide a uh, survey party to the Illinois. If he'd had his way, we'd have left this afternoon. I take it he doesn't care for the city. Well, he thinks civilization is uncivilized. <laughs> Thanks for the coffee. It was kind of you to ask me. Please don't go, Rebecca. It's been such a long time since I've had anyone to talk to. I hope you can understand the necessity of keeping this a secret. The country is still young and in some ways insecure. There is still a strong Tory element which would welcome this catastrophe as an opportunity to, to create unrest and possibly usurp authority. Well, it could be that they're the ones who kidnapped him. Well, that's rather doubtful. John disappeared two days ago. If this had been a political move, the news of his absence would have been made public before this. How many people know that he's gone? The vice president, Mr. Bedlow, yourself, and me. Why Mr. Bedlow? 
John had gone to visit him the night he disappeared. Oh, a personal matter. They've been close friends for I don't know how many years. How long do you think you can keep this quiet? Not for very long. The president is due in Washington next week to dedicate the White House in our new capital. His absence at the ceremony would be difficult to explain. I don't like to keep on asking questions. But why did you choose me? Why isn't someone else already, honey? I was warned not to notify the authorities or harm might come to the president. And you were chosen because I need someone I can trust. John has talked about you and your exploits endlessly. I want him home, Mr. Boone. I think you can see he gets here safely. There's no way I can guarantee that. I know that. I'm not asking the impossible. I ask only that you try. Now, where do I deliver the money? And who do I give it to? I copied the instructions exactly as they were given to me. Take the southbound stage at 6 o'clock Thursday morning. Someone will contact the carrier of the ransom money along the way. The safety of the captive as well as the carrier depends on the strictest secrecy. How will I recognize who the contact party is? Or more important, how will he know me? The money satchel. It was left along with the demand for ransom. Carry it carefully. I'm carrying $100,000, ma'am. You can rest assured I'll carry it carefully. Perhaps, perhaps carefully was the wrong word. I, I should have said conspicuously. Well, I can be that, too. Being taller than most, I seem to stand out in the crowd. Mr. Boone, I don't know how to thank you, both for myself and for the nation. You don't have to thank me. I just hope it turns out all right. And I hope I can explain it to my wife. I'm afraid you'll have to leave that to your own discretion. Good night. And Godspeed. Bothered to knock. It was open. Well, I thought perhaps you had another guest. I didn't want to disturb you. Another guest? That was a woman I saw leaving here, Dan. Now, wasn't it? Now that you mention it, I guess it was. What was she doing here? I don't suppose you'd believe me if I said she got in the wrong room by mistake. Nope. I can't blame you for that. Who is she and what did she want? Well, just an old friend that dropped by to say hello. Is that the best you can do? Right at the moment, it is. Well, it was plain that she didn't want to be recognized. Why don't you start telling me the truth? Well, Becky, I can't. Then why are we packing? Are we leaving? You aren't. I am. Going where? Well, I don't know. And I'll admit I'd feel better if I did know. That woman going with you? No. But she's the reason for your going. In a manner of speaking. You're in some sort of trouble. Well, not yet, but there's a very good chance that I will be before I'm finished. That I'm going with you. Becky, you can't. I can't tell you why, but this is one trip I've got to make alone. And that's all I can tell you right now. You're going to have to stay here at the hotel and visit your friend until I get back. You relax. I'll finish packing. 
Never seen a man yet who could do it properly. plan on the travel with me? Well, I don't know. That depends on what direction you're going. I'm going to Baltimore. I guess that's south. <laughs> I guess it is. I reckon I'll be traveling with you. Oh, uh, good. I'll put your baggage in the boot. Thank you. How about that other bag you got? No, thank you. If you don't mind, I'll hang on to this. Well, uh, you suit yourself. Unless you have some special interest. Oh, uh, what interest would I have in that? Who do you think I am? I'm an honest man. I'm not a thief. Now, don't get yourself all worked up. I just thought you might be the man I was looking for, or the man who's looking for me. Mister, just how far do you intend to travel? I don't know. Well, in that event, you're going to have a bit of a problem paying for your fare now, ain't you? Well, now, if that's what's worrying you, I'll pay my fare to Baltimore. And if I don't go that far, you can keep the change and buy yourself a drink. Is that fair? Yeah. That's fair. I, I guess you would say that's fair. Father. Yes, Nancy. Mr. Boone is getting on the stage. I was quite sure he would. That's why I chose him. Mr. Boone is a man of great loyalty, willing to sacrifice his time and, for all he knows, jeopardize his life. All for a rather intangible thing called patriotism. Uh, loyalty is a most admirable quality. What has become of yours? I found out it had no commercial value. Then you still insist I'm going through with this crime. The government deprived me of my land through what they chose to call a technicality. They also refused to compensate me for my loss. And so I'm forced to extract payment by the only means at my command. But President Adams is your friend. Child, I promise you no harm will come to John. It's a temporary inconvenience to him and, uh, source of concern, I suppose, to Mrs. Adams, but those things are soon forgotten. And Mr. Boone? Same thing. He doesn't know me, and I don't intend to give him any clue to my identity, so why should I harm him? From what I've heard of him, he may harm you. No. Not where the life of the president is still at stake. Besides, Pike and Gideon will be there. They won't see me hurt. And then what happens to them? They could be hanged or shot. Is that any way to repay their loyalty? I've taken care of that. Tomorrow, it'll all be over. Remember, Pike and Gideon are bonded men. Tomorrow, they'll be free and wealthy and on their way to wherever both of them want to go. Oh, Father. Now, please, please don't cry. I know you're no more happy living here than I am. You would like to go back to the plantation, wouldn't you? Oh, yes. And dry your tears. Because that's where we're going to go.
Good morning, Mrs. Boone. What can I do for you? Would you see that my luggage is brought down? I'll be back for it shortly. You are leaving? Yes. But Mr. Boone told me distinctly... That we would be staying. But he forgot to mention that I'd be spending the weekend with some friends in the country. I'll be gone two days at the most, and we'll be keeping the suite. Oh, uh, yes, ma'am. Yes. Oh, I almost forgot. I will be needing a carriage. I'll see to it, Mrs. Boone. I'll need it for two days at least. Oh, that can be arranged. There's just one more thing. Yes? Can you tell me where I might buy a gun? It's a surprise gift for my husband. He's quite fond of guns. Across the street, uh, next to Helford's Tea Garden, madam. Thank you. I believe I'll take this one. Would you load it for me? May I make a suggestion, ma'am? Of course. It may cost me a sale, but I have to say that this is not a gun I'd recommend for ladies. Why not? Well, it's kind of bulky to begin with. It's real big caliber. Mm, I know. And if you aim to carry this around all primed and charged, somebody's apt to get shot. That's quite possible. Yes, ma'am. Now, if you'll just hand it back, I'll give you some instruction in the firing of it. In here? I use that as a target range. You see that small clay ball? We use that as a target. Hmm. I'll be needing some powder and shot. Yes, ma'am. I just hope you ain't real mad at anybody, ma'am. Now, that's not the way I understood it. I was told you was just going to make a weekend visit. Now, you tell me we might have to go to Baltimore or even farther. Does it make that much difference? I assure you, I can pay. All I want to do is overtake the southbound stage. You say your husband's on it. Yes. But he didn't tell you where he was heading. No. Well, lady, I can understand your concern, but I don't make any guarantees. Now, that southbound stage has got a good two-hour head start. I doubt if we can catch it on the road. Mr. Gurney, it has to stop sometime, doesn't it? Yes, ma'am. Lays over for the night at Dobbs Ferry. Good. Then we'll be sure to catch it there. But that could turn out to be expensive. Now, you could wait here and catch tomorrow's stage. And be a full day behind? Now, I've already told you I can pay. All right. You can pay. I guess I can drive. I'd just like to ask one question, though, to put my mind at ease. What is it? Are you aiming to do anything drastic after we catch him? It all depends. Puts my mind at ease or not. Gideon? Yeah? Stage is coming. Have you got the fresh team ready? Yeah, they're ready. Well, then you bring them around. Why do I always have Hi. to... Go? I'll see you at the passengers. Go ahead. changing the teams in case you'd like to stretch your legs. Good idea. You know, driver, I'd be willing to bet you that you didn't miss a single bump between Philadelphia and here. Well, I'm just selling transportation. I ain't selling comfort. 
I can vouch for that. I see you're still holding on to the satchel. Uh, yeah, I've grown quite attached to it. <laughs> I noticed that. By the way you guarded it, you think it was full of money. I can see how you might think so. <laughs> it ain't, is it? Ain't what? Filled with money? Wildest idea I've ever heard of. Mister, from what I've seen of you, there's nothing I could think of that could be too wild and still not possible. Hey, you. Sir? You are new here, ain't you? Uh, yes, sir. The uh, fresh team will be ready soon. Good. Sir? Yes? Would you mind telling me your name? No, I don't mind. Daniel Boone, why? Because I think I'm the man you're looking for. What makes you think that? Because you're carrying that bag. You mean this bag? It's the one. I was told to look out for it. Now, if you'll just come along inside. There's no need of going in there and making yourself comfortable, mister. We'll be leaving any minute now. Well, now, you just go on and have yourself a nice trip. I'm staying. You mean you're going to stay here? Yeah, I uh, sort of take a liking to the place. something a drink or some food not just now I want to talk to you all right well what do you want to talk about about you and Pike do you know what you've got yourself mixed into not rightly all I know is we stole a man why did you steal him because the colonel told us to Colonel. Colonel who? If he wants you to know, he'll tell you himself. That's not very likely. <laughs> no, I don't reckon it is. Do you know what you call it when you steal a man? Yeah. Call it kidnapping. And they hang you if they catch you at it. But the Colonel's promised that no harm will come to me and Pike. Do you believe that? The Colonel's never lied to me, sir. How long have you known your, your colonel? Ever since I come to this country. Your Pike and me were bonded to him. He used to work on that plantation. This plantation? Where was that? I don't think I better tell you that. Maybe I told too much already. One thing you can tell me, Gideon. The real reason you stole this man. He was fixing to do the Colonel harm. No, Gideon. This is why you stole him. <sighs> Looks like a powerful lot of money. It is a powerful lot of money. Maybe enough to turn an honest man into a dishonest one. This man you stole, do you know where he is? Yeah, I know. Is he all right? Yes, he's comfortable and warm, and he's had food. Gideon, I don't want to see you and Pike hang. Because you're not entirely responsible. If you'll tell me where this man is, I promise you I'll do everything in my power to help you. That's thoughtful of you, Mr. Boone. But the Colonel has promised us the kind of help you can't offer. I got a piece of paper saying Pike and me are no longer bonded to him. I think I'll have that drink after all. all right. Trouble, lady. Is that a roadhouse down there? 
it was. We'll stop there. Lady, it's been closed for years. It ain't nothing but a relay station now. Man would be out of his mind to get off there. You don't know my husband. No, ma'am, I don't. I ain't sure I want to. I'm mean, just one, and a family like that's got to be enough. Get up. There's a carriage you coming. Looks like an aims to stop her. You figured that could be the colonel? No. The colonel said he wouldn't be here till after dark. What do you want me to do? I want you to get rid of them, Pike. Now, you tell him there's nothing here, all right? There's no food and no drink. And nobody. Except you and me. All right? Mr. Boone, I have to ask you to stay out of sight. You don't even have to ask. I'm not about to bother anyone until I do what I came here to do. Afternoon, sir. Southbound stage stop here today. Yes, sir, it always stops. Change horses here. And did any passengers stop here? No, nobody ever stops here. They just ain't nothing to stop here for, except me and the horses. <laughs> Thanks. Nobody stopped here, lady. Like I said, we're wasting time. We'll go on to Dobbs Ferry. Yes, sir. Thoughts about trying to run away from me. Well, if I did try, do you think you could hit me? <laughs> I've got this old musket charge pretty heavy. When she hits you, it makes quite a hole. I believe you. I'm not running, Gideon, so you can put that gun away. I didn't like to point at you, Mr. Boone, but I've got orders not to let you leave. Yeah, it's gonna be dark for long. You anxious for the Colonel to show up? The well, sooner he gets here, the sooner I can leave. I didn't say what time, just after dark, so I don't reckon it'll be too late. Pike's got supper ready if you're hungry. Well, I'm always hungry. Sorry, lady. Where do you want the luggage? I'm not quite sure yet. Do you know where the stagecoach stops? Right here at this tavern. Well, I don't see it anywhere. Lady, even horses gotta rest and eat. They're likely run back. If it's all right with you, I'm going on in and have myself a drink. You go right ahead. Gentlemen, it's been a long, rough day. <laughs> Ale, about a yard of it. I'm sorry, lady, but I got a rule against serving drinks to females. Don't apologize. I'm opposed to it myself. Well, what are you doing in here? I thought maybe you could tell me if the stage from Philadelphia had arrived. Yeah, about an hour ago. 
Did any passengers get off? I don't know, lady. You might ask him. He was driving it. Thank you. Gentlemen, everything is going to be all right. <laughs> I beg your pardon. Are you the driver of the stage from Philadelphia? I am. Did you pick up a passenger this morning at the Adelphia Hotel? Uh, yes, I did. Was he rather large? <laughs> Lady, I've driven horses that were smaller than him. <laughs> oh, that must be my husband. Could you possibly tell me where he's lodging here? Uh, he's not lodging here, lady. He got off at the relay station a way back. The relay station? Yep. Had his fare paid all the way to Baltimore, too. <laughs> I'm drinking up the difference. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. And, uh, lady, if I were you, I'd let him go. <laughs> Mr. Gurney. What is it now? You told me that no passengers got off back at that relay station. That's what I was told. Well, you were told wrong. My husband got off back there. It just goes to show you can't trust people. It's a little late to do anything about it now. It certainly is not. I have to go back there immediately. And you want me to drive you? Of course. I hired you, didn't I? Lady, my horses are tired. I'm tired. I can appreciate how tired you are, Mr. Gurney. But that's no excuse for not living up to your obligations. <sighs> Will it be all right if I take time to drink my drink? for quite a spell now. It'll still be dark for quite a spell longer. Did it ever occur to either of you that your trusted colonel may have gotten scared off, left you behind to take the punishment that should be his? He never mentioned any punishment. No, I don't suppose he did. This prisoner of yours, you say he's comfortable and has food? That's true. The colonel said he wasn't to be hurt or to go hungry. Well, I've been here for quite a while now. I suppose he might be getting hungry again soon. Well, Pike's already fed him. Then he can't be very far away from here. Pike's been here most all of the time. I never said he was very far. And it's best you stop thinking thoughts like that. Thoughts like what? Like you might find this man and get out of here before the colonel comes. You see, you don't know where he is. One of us could harm him or you'd still be looking. I don't think you want that. Gideon, you're quite right. I wouldn't want that. About a quarter of a mile. Oh, good. We'll get out here then. You can rest the horses. Lady, that's a long walk. Nonsense. We can be there in ten minutes at the most. Why do you want to walk? Why can't we just drive up like anybody else? Oh, there's something going on I don't quite understand. So I prefer no one know we're coming. Not we. You. You mean you're not going with me? I learned a long time ago not to be present when a husband and wife get into a fight. Mr. Gurney, what makes you think we're going to fight? Lady, you didn't travel all this way just to shake his hand. Now, you just go right on ahead and I'll wait here. I might even get a little rest. <laughs> Thank you. 
just be worth it to see what happens. On the other hand, it's safer here. Pike? You hear that? Yeah, I heard it. That could be the Colonel now. Go ahead, get on out there. And you just said where you are, Mr. Bill. I don't reckon it'll be too long until we all get out of here. You wouldn't mind pointing that thing a little to the left, would you? There's no need to worry. It won't fire. Unless I have to touch the trigger. Well, that's what worries me. You might turn out to be a very nervous man. Good evening, sir. I take it you must be the colonel. Uh, you don't know me, sir. The chances are quite remote that we'll ever meet again, but just in case we should, I prefer we meet as strangers. So if you don't mind, I'd be obliged if you'd uh, face the fire and make no effort to turn around and look at me. I'm not interested in looking at you. All I care about is that a certain man gets home safely. Well, you can be assured of that, sir. Like you, I'd hate to see him come to any harm. Now, if you just move toward the fire, now, you may shift your gun, Gideon. I don't think the gentleman intends to give us any trouble. You can depend on that. I know when I'm outnumbered. I assume all the money's here. I don't know. I didn't count it. That's what I started out with. You're a very trusting man. Under the circumstances, I don't believe the lady would shortchange me. No, I don't think so either. Now, how do I go about finding the merchandise I just bought? I've written the instructions. You'll have no trouble finding him. There'll be a northbound coach coming through here in the morning. Meantime, you'll find food and blankets. I know you'll see to it that our friend arrives home safely. I'll see to that. You'll find this note tacked on to a tree half mile down the road, merely as a safeguard against your being too curious. It's curious enough to risk a man's life. I shouldn't think so. Still, there's no harm in being a little cautious. Just one more thing. Yes, sir. You said I don't know you. That's true. But I do know Gideon and Pike. Well, why should you concern yourself about them? I'd hate to see someone get hurt because of misplaced loyalty. You know, I'd hate that, too. You'll never find them. I've already taken care of that. I get the horses. And now I'll bid you good night, sir. Colonel! Get in here. Oh, Dad! Becky. Mr. Bedlow. I'd hope to avoid violence, Mr. Boone, but now I have no choice. This is a complication I could not foresee. Now that I'm known, we can't afford to have any witnesses. Gideon? Pike? Colonel? Aren't you forgetting something? Not that I know of. You said you'd bring some papers, and both Pike and me are free men. Did you bring them with you, sir? Well, of course I did. I've never lied to you. And I'll take those papers. Along with the bag of money. Giddy, I know. Mr. Boone here just said he hated to see anyone get hurt because of misplaced loyalty. Both Pike and I agree with him. A Giddy and I have taken a good deal of trouble to arrange passage for you on an English ship. But fortunately, neither you nor Pike knows where she's sailing to or where she's sailing from. So, uh... Don't threaten me, Gideon. This is no threat, Colonel. You just said we can't have any witnesses. There are only four people know what Pike and I have done. 
You, Mr. Boone, that lady, and the man we got tied up in the cellar rotten back. Now, I want you to give me the papers and the money. Now. you did. Daniel, I don't know how to express my gratitude. Well, Mr. President, uh, you might ask Becky to that dedication ceremony. She likes social doing. Oh, Dan, you shouldn't ask a thing like that. I'd be honored if you'd be my guest. Good night. Good night. Mr. President, about Miss Bedlow. Oh, yes, she's a friend of yours, isn't she? Well, do all you can to help her, won't you? There'll be no charges brought against her. Thank you, Mr. President. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Ah, Mr. Janney. Thank you for the ride back. We had quite an adventure tonight, didn't we? the darndest day. I start out with some female looking for her husband, and I end up shaking hands with the president. I'm almost afraid to tell my friends about it. Well, it'll be worth a try. No, they'd be sure to call me a liar. And I'd almost be inclined to agree with them. 